How's you doing folks? Welcome back to Irish and Scottish Fishing and Fly Tying. So today I'm going to show you how I tie my version up of a black panel cruncher. Now I know a black panels black panels are very it's a, it's a classic pattern and I'm sure a lot of people have fished them so I uh, came up with this pattern to make it a bit more modern. So it's as I said it's tied in the cruncher. It's tied in the cruncher variant. And uh, as I say I've uh, like the majority of the flies I've tied in this channel have had quite a lot of success with them. So I'll quickly just show you how to tie it up. So like anything, uh, I'm going to tie this in a B175 size 10. And uh, as I say, you can tie this, you can tie it on a size 8. You can tie it on a, all the way down to a 16. As I say, I've got them all in my box tied up in various sizes. And the good thing with this pattern is, is like not just will this work in a fishery, it also works very well in a river for brownies as well. Or in open the hill locks, I've had a lot more success with it on the hill locks. And here, so, so get things started. The hooks in the vise, and then for the thread, I'll be using Uni Thread Eight O in uh, in black. There you go, in black. So all I'm going to do is just start with layer thread, like the most of majority of all my crunchers. Start with a layer of thread and then I'm going to come in with my rib to start with, which is just a fine silver wire. And run that down the bottom of the hook. And you just pass the point of the hook. Put your rib out of the way so you can bring in your tail, tail material. So the tail material like a black panel is, it's going to be pheasant tail, I'm oh, sorry, uh, golden pheasant tippets. And I'm just going to grab the, the portion that I've laid out. We'll just grab that. I'll snip that. Little pinch, and then the way I'm tying this in, I'm going to tie it into the second part of the black. Well, this does, just gives you a nice little head length. We'll just catch that in at the top of the hook. Two light turns, and then just give it a little persuasion onto the top of the hook. Tighten down, snip off your excess, and then tighten down onto the hook, tidying up all your mess. Roll the thread up to the top of the hook, give the tail a little jiggle, a little moisten. If you're happy with the tail, that's me happy with the tail. So for the body of this, I'm using pheasant tail dyed black. As I say, I'll grab three fibres. These fibers, you can get these as a vineyards one. You know, I had two of these big five, two of these big fillers in a pack. I think it was like six pound. I think. So I'll come in with me, pheasant tail fiber. I'll catch it in at the point. Well, the points of the fiber I like catching them in at the point. You can tie it in with a stock if you want, but I just think it gives me a better body. Catch this in all the way up the top of the hook, all the way down to the bottom of the hook, to where you want to start your turns. Bring your thread back up. And then start your turns. So I'm just going to start the turns the same way I tie my thread. So I'm just going to bring this up, maintain intention because it's quite. Uh, it is still weak material, and if you don't, it can snap. And if you don't maintain tension when you're wrapping it, it will unravel, which is a bit annoying. Just gradually working this up for the body. Up there, it doesn't sound just a couple more light turns and then come up with me a bobbin. Three turns over the top just to catch it in, like so. And then just to tidy it up, I'm going to pull all the fibers back. Then I'm going to snip that. So also if you have a look at my channel, I've also got a Kate McLaren classic pattern tied up in a cruncher variant as well. So this is just going on from them classic patterns tied in crunchers. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up my rib. And because I've tied my, flat, my thread this way, I'm bringing my rib up the other way. Nice evenly spaced turns. You want to get maybe two, maybe four turns out of this up the body. 
There we go. There's four. Let me see when the space catch on the top of it. Two turns. And then two turns back. And then a helicopter that off. Like so. The hook's moved a little bit. Just needs a little bit of a tightening. Then for the uh I'm gonna be bringing a little bit of a flash over the uh forex. So for that I'm using Uni Mylar and a 14 in Pearl. So I'll, I'll catch me I'll catch my mylar well my pearl in first. I'm gonna catch this into the top of the hook. So all I'll do is just catch this into the top of the hook. Just pull it down so I've not got any excess. And all I'm doing is I'm just running that down to the top of the hook. There's a couple of excess. Pheasant tail fibers that I missed. Tidy that up. Thread back up to the point. Put that in the spring just to hold it out of the way. And then for the four axe, I'm using black peacock curl. Don't know if you've watched any of my other videos. I'll grab one strand. I'll run my uh, run my hands down it to get all the fibers out, and then I'll snip off about an inch and a half from the stock, and that's what I'll tie in. I'm going to thread to the top of the hook again and then start my turns. Hopefully this time I don't snap it or let go of it. Let go of it, let go of it and it unraveled. I was being a bit too greedy with my forex. Again, just maintain intention. Try not to let go because it will unravel. Build yourself up a nice little forex. Once you're happy, bring up the top of the hook. Two turns over. Pull it back. Two turns back over. And then maintain attention in the bobbin. Just should just snap off. A little bit of a tidy up. And then you want to bring your pearl over the top of the case now, over the top of the forex. Catch this in. Once you've done two light turns over, then come in and start to just run it back. Come in and snip this. Now you are going to be putting a hack over this anyway, so don't worry if there's any excess material. But if you look there, it's just a little, little bit of flash over the top of the forex. I don't know if you can see that with the light. So all I'm going to do now is just bring my thread back to where I'm going to start my hackle. It's about there. A little bit of a tidy up and then for the hackle on this I'm using turl again. A turl hen hen neck. I'm just using it and it's dyed black. And I'm grabbing the uh as I say I'm grabbing the fellers from down here. If you're tying a big big fly then you can grab the fellers up at the top. But just the little tiny fellers down at the bottom. Because you don't want you don't want it too big a hackle as I say because this is the, the black panel you know it doesn't really matter. You know you can you can tie it with a, a bigger a uh, bigger wing, well sorry, a bigger hackle if you want. But just to keep it as close to a cruncher as possible, I'm just uh so I'm just grabbing this, I'll grab the grab the fella right here and I'm just gonna prep it. So all I'm doing, I'm just gonna bear a bit of the stock away. Don't know if you can see that in the camera, but so I'll just bear a bit of a stock away like that. And that's where I'm going to tie it in. So I'll catch this into the top of the hook. Bring my thread forward and then bring my thread back. And then snip that. Like so come in with my hackle pliers. Just taking my time with this. As I say, I've laid this on the top of the on the top of the hook. Just to make sure, as I say, that there is a back and front of the hackle, so I'm pulling all the front bit back, so the shiny portion is going to be the front of the fly. And then for the hackle, I'm going to start my hackle. And for this, I'm going to do a two turn hackle, and every time I'm doing one turn, I'm pulling it back, like so. And then that's my second. And then I'm going to come on, do 
two turns over the top. And then pull on it back, get it to turn back over it. And then maintaining tension, I'm just going to pluck that away and pull all the material back. And then I'm going to start to form the head. So, come in and do my whip finish. Two turn, I'll do four turns in it twice. There's one, two, three, four. Like so, little tighten. Come in again. And one, two, three, four. Snip off the excess thread, like so, and then before you come in with your varnish, just run all the fibres back and come in and pinch. And all this pinch does is just just shapes the shapes the hen hackle into a good position. So it makes the fly look good. Come in then with your vineyards fine head cement. And like the majority of all my flies, trout flies, I'm gonna lay one coat on now. I'm going to put it on my drying stand and then I'll be coming in and putting an R coat on. Two coats of vineyards fine, he seems to do it. Just lay it on there and then work it around quick. Do the same. Making sure you don't catch any of the hen hackle. That's it done. Put that on my drying stand and I will let it completely dry. For the so I don't know if you can see, you can actually see the little bit of flash on the top. I don't know if it's catching in the light. For me, the, like I've tied this pattern before and uh, I seem to have had more success when I put the flash on it. I don't know if it just brings the fish in, but anyway, folks, that's my, uh, this is my version of a, well, it's my version of a black panel cruncher. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, please add it to your box and give it a go. As I say, uh, I'm a huge fan of fishing classic patterns and I like putting a modern twist on them. So, you know, uh, as I say, I've had it quite a lot of success with this pattern of you know it does work for it well for me on rivers and hill locks and I have I have had it on my cast in uh some of the fisheries I've fished as well and a couple of fish have took it like especially on it's a good fly for the top dropper especially if you tie it with a bigger front hackle. So folks okay if you if you like what you've looked uh if you like what you've seen on my channel uh please have a look at my other flies. I've got salmon flies on there I've also got other trout patterns I've got boobies I've got fabs and then when I can get a chance and get the time, I'm going to be uh, doing some fishing videos where I'm actually out fishing these patterns. Uh, so if you enjoyed this pattern, please like and subscribe, folks. And I'll uh, see you at the next fly. See you later.